everyone and welcome to my Disneyland Paris tips, tricks, guide, everything you need to know about going to Disneyland Paris at the moment. Obviously the Disney parks have been changing quite a lot over the last few years but I have recently come back from Walt Disney World and we did a trip to Disneyland Paris straight after so I'm often asked about the difference and sort of comparison and I will just premise this by saying it's really hard to compare a trip to Walt Disney World and a trip to Disneyland Paris because they are very different. And Disneyland Paris is more like a quick fix of Disney, close to home, um, can do it on a bit more of a budget or you can pay a bit more. And I'm gonna talk to you actually about prices as well. At the end of this video, I have broken down how much things cost too. So hopefully that'll give you a bit more of an overview of what we paid. And yeah, I'm just gonna run you through rides and attractions and shows, the hotel, the travel, food, and a bit of everything that you need to know for your next trip to Disneyland Paris. So if you enjoy this, give it a thumbs up, click subscribe. If you're new, my name is Brogan and I do lots of home, lifestyle and travel vlogs. And of course I cover Disney stuff. So I'll leave the playlist to our Disneyland Paris vlogs if you haven't seen them, because personally they're some of my favorite videos I filmed this year with my fiance Benji. So definitely go and check them out. Let's kick start with travel. So we actually chose to go via the Eurostar this time and I have done all three methods I guess you could call them of getting to Disneyland Paris. I think coach would actually be a fourth, but I have flown, driven, and now done the Eurostar. And I can confidently say that the Eurostar is by far my favorite method of getting to Disneyland Paris. Now they have a direct train from London St. Pancreas to Disneyland Paris and I will always pay extra for this. I have previously changed at Lille and honestly the change of trains, if the price is lots cheaper or the timings work better for you, then changing is absolutely fine. But for me, having that direct train made the day so smooth. I cannot tell you how easy it is to get on the train and then all of a sudden, you're in France and your phone changes to the correct time and <laughs> the landscape is suddenly like, oh, we're changing. It's like countryside and we're on our way to Saint Paris. I'm not gonna lie guys, I wasn't really concentrating and then I noticed that my time on my phone changed and we're in France, just like that. So there's Disneyland Paris. Another great thing is that the train station is literally right next to the Disney Village. So you can walk straight to your hotel, straight into the parks, whatever works for you. Disney do offer a Disney Express service where they are able to take your luggage straight to the hotel from the Eurostar. But Benj and I didn't do this. Truthfully, I thought it wasn't running because of COVID, but I was wrong after researching it. It is back, it is there. Um, and I don't know about it, I can't speak from that experience, but maybe look into that. If you're looking to go straight into the parks, there is a, an opportunity if you've got a Disney hotel to have your luggage whisked straight to the hotel, which would have been good. But for us, actually, I quite liked getting from the train station, going straight to our hotel. We stayed at Newport Bay. I'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah, freshening up. We actually had quick showers, I think, so it was quite warm. Um, and I will premise this by saying we went in June 2022. I have been for all the seasons to Disneyland Paris. And I think that June is my favorite, but I do have a section on weather. <laughs> we'll go there in a minute, I'm jumping the gun. But Eurostar, we did the standard on the way out and we did the premier on the way home. And the only reason I upgraded us to premier on the way home is because it was literally like 14 pound extra. So I figured that could be worth it for a bit of extra space and we got food. However, I personally didn't like the food. It was a cold, pesto pasta and I didn't eat much of it. We did get like a mini wine and a brownie. Um, so it was quite nice and the space was nice. Uh, we actually had loads of space. Benji went to the seats behind me and laid down and had a little sleep. So you could say it was maybe worth it just for the peace and the quiet because the standard carriage is quite noisy with lots of children and families, which is obviously absolutely fine. That's the difference what I'm trying to tell you. It was a lot quieter in um, Premier. Is that what they call it? Premier. So yeah, a bit of extra leg room. Would I do it again? Maybe if it was only 14, 15 pound extra, I probably would, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't go out of my way to spend more on it um, and my expectations would be lowered because I really thought I was getting some nice 
food and I just didn't enjoy it but that's just my personal preference and opinion. <laughs> we went a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We arrived into Disneyland Paris at around three o'clock when we were checking into our room and then on the way home we left the parks at 6 p.m but you really only need to allocate like an hour before so you got like a whole park day on the Wednesday. So we had one full day Tuesday, um, a big chunk of the afternoon and evening on the Monday and basically however early you want to get up on your last day until about five o'clock on the Wednesday and personally I just think this was absolutely perfect a lot of people ask me like how long do you need in Disneyland Paris and for us this was great didn't feel I needed any more time was actually ready to go home on that Wednesday so yeah that's what I would recommend so Eurostar and traveling to Disney was great Love you, Eurostar. I have also previously worked with Eurotunnel as one of my brand partners, and we used them for our previous trip. We actually drove, we actually drove to the slopes, went skiing, and then drove home and stopped in Disneyland Paris. And I do actually really like driving because you can have all of your own stuff at your own time, you can leave on your own time, things like that. So if I was more confident, if we had a bigger car, I think I would actually consider driving on a future trip too. Next, let's talk about the hotel. So we decided to stay at Newport Bay Club, which is a hotel that my mum used to take us to a lot when we were kids. I have so many photos of me as a kid at Newport Bay Club. Hello, well, can you see them broken? Where's the princess cousin? Over there, where the chimney is. It's broken, good morning, broken. Have you had a nice time? What's been your favourite thing you've been on? That train. <gasps> the, the runaway train. I always remember really liking it. I like the theming. It very much is similar to Disney's Yacht and Beach Club in Walt Disney World. It's got that nautical theming throughout, which I love. So the hotel grounds and the hotel in general was lovely. Uh, everything was very clean and organized. I had good service every time I went to reception and asked for anything. So we paid for a superior room, which honestly, I don't fully know the difference. It was all that was left at the time that I booked. Um, and I, in my head, just assumed this means that we would be slightly closer to the lifts and stuff, but there is other tiers that are higher, like they have club level um, tiers. And yeah, I think don't know if superior just meant we got a slightly bigger room, but we had no view. Um, so we didn't have any view of like the um, lake or anything like that. But there were pros and cons. Being quite far away from the lifts <laughs> meant it was quite quiet where we were located. I couldn't hear anything else going on around the hotel, but it was like a five minute walk from the lifts to the room. And I just found that was just too long. After a long park day, it doesn't sound long when you say it out loud, but I promise you when you're walking up and down the corridors, it just felt like it was miles away. So that was my biggest critique about Newport Bay is that it was quite big. I feel like we've been walking for miles. <laughs> Where is it? Oh my gosh, it's massive. The luggage service at the hotel was great. They have a whole area out the front of the hotel where you can leave your luggage and store it for the day and come pick it up. They had a really good system there. It felt really safe, really good service. I was happy about that because I don't always get that kind of service in lots of other hotels that we stay at. Mickey and Minnie do have a meet and greet in the hotel in their sailor nautical outfits, but we didn't see them at all. I don't know if it's just because we weren't there at the times that they're more likely to be there. I think it's like 11 till two or something. So don't think we were actually in the hotel in those times, but they do meet there and it is another little nice perk to being a hotel guest. But the biggest perk for being a hotel guest is the extra magic time you get. And I do think it's hugely beneficial. You get a whole hour before the parks open. So it means you can go in before everyone else and maximize that time. And I would say you can probably get two or three big rides um, done in that time if you're savvy and you can run around a bit. But the thing to note is that not all the rides are open in Action Magic Time. So Big Thunder was open, I think Buzz, um, but there were quite a few that were not. So I can't give you a list of what is and isn't open. I literally couldn't remember and I wouldn't know where to find that, but keep that in mind that's that. The check-in desk was really, really busy when we were checking in at around three o'clock. So keep that in mind if you're able to check in later in the day or even at the end of the park day, um, maybe that'll be quieter so you don't have to stand awake because it'll quite a wait. And they definitely wouldn't give our room to us any earlier than three o'clock. Sometimes I found when I go to Florida or other hotels, if we turn up at like two or half one, sometimes the room is ready but they wouldn't give us the room until bang on three. The room itself had absolutely everything we needed. 
I had the coffee machine, the shower was nice, the bathroom was big, the beds were super comfy. I will say I really love Hotel Cheyenne as well if you're looking for value. Um, I just think the Disney hotels are all great really, but Hotel Cheyenne is really good for budget. Um, I really love it, but the beds were so uncomfortable. I don't know if they'd recently changed them at the time, but they were rock hard. Whereas at Newport Bay, the beds and the bed linen and everything about the beds and sleeping was just dreamy. Benj and I actually decided to have a bed each. So we had like a small double each just because they were a little bit too small for two adults. <laughs> so we decided to have a bed each and it was just very nice at the end of a park day. I love him and obviously I sleep next to him every night at home, but at the end of a park day, it was lovely to have separate time. <laughs> in terms of walking distance to the park, it took us about 20 minutes, I'd say, 15, 20 minutes to get from the hotel to the park entrance area, um, which is not too bad really, and it's a really lovely walk. My only other notes and criticism about this hotel is that the vending machines, they're discontinuing them and getting rid of them. So anything you've read about being able to get free tea, coffee, hot drinks from the vending machines, they'll eventually all be gone. Some of them didn't work, like on our floor, it just didn't work. But the moment you can still get a free drink, but it's because they've put uh, coffee making facilities in the rooms that they're getting rid of vending machines. But I did manage to get a hot chocolate, which was really nice. And you just tap your room card and you can get a drink. And also the only other thing is the pool was closed. So I can't uh, talk to you about how that was because at the time it was closed for the week we were there. Let's talk about tickets. So hotel and tickets, we actually booked via Attraction Tickets who are one of my brand partners. I've been working with them for many years. However, we are paying customers for this trip, fully paid for ourselves, no press discount, nothing like that. We are guess um so just want to make that really clear i chose to use attraction tickets because i love and trust them everything was really easy to put via their website firstly and then they actually called me so we came went out on the monday and they called me on the friday afternoon and was just like hi this is so and so from customer services just wanted to check you um have everything you need and um you know do you need anything for your trip to just paris and i said to her wow that is really nice service like i don't think anyone's ever called me before from a travel company so that was lovely the price was so much better with them as well really really good and we booked the hotel and the park tickets through them and as part of the package because they're always running deals disney run deals attraction ticket have deals all the time we got a 50 euro gift card as at the time of booking as part of a package and we also got 10 free photo prints they're literally like little polaroids that they printed on card that have attraction tickets logo on them so i don't think that's a massive perk to be honest my big issue with booking wire attraction tickets and i have sent this feedback to them and they are looking into it is that i couldn't connect our hotel booking to the app it just wouldn't let me they the disney um cast members told me that there's a problem with booking third party tickets I don't know if this is a temporary glitch. I don't know if it's been going on for a long time and I don't know if Disney are currently trying to resolve it. But the problem with not being able to connect your booking to the Disneyland Paris app is that I couldn't book premier access passes on the first day. So I lost out on the opportunity to maximize our time and book some passes because I couldn't, I physically couldn't. It wouldn't let me um, add it. So I ended up asking at City Hall on the first day, which I will say, City Hall, which is sort of customer services, is really busy. Like the line is huge at the moment because guests are either having this problem or they're going to sort out their tax refund, which I'll talk about later on in this video. Um, but the queue for City Hall was always big and I did queue in it one day and they said to me, you need to get a temporary paper ticket to temporarily connect to the app and you have to get one per day. So you show your current tickets and they like give you a paper version. Now my little tip here is if you do need cast members or guest relations, there are a couple of like singular podiums and we found a cast member walking into Frontierland. There was a cast member on a podium, just on her own, just standing there with an iPad. Um, and they're the kind of people you need to sort of keep an eye out for because they never have a queue. No one ever seems to be there. We went there to get our paper, <laughs> our paper tickets, so that we could then book premium access. Does that make sense? Premium access, whatever they call it. So. That would be my only big flaw about booking with a third party. I'm sure that applies to all third parties, by the way. I'm sure it's not just an attraction tickets thing, 
but it is a bit of a problem. I know I'm gonna to talk to you more about the breakdown of prices and I do want to talk to you a bit about food as well, but just as while we're here, the hotel, which is the superior room at Newport Bay Club and the three days, two park tickets. So that's like a park hopper for the full three days for two adults came to a total of £685.87 at the time we booked. Plus we got that 50 euro gift card. And then I also added on breakfast so i didn't do half board dining full board or any other dining plan this time but i did add the breakfast which is unbelievably expensive like are you ready for this <laughs> it was a hundred pound extra for the hotel breakfast which is essentially 50 pound per day so 25 pound per person per day then there was a 10 pound booking fee i believe so the total cost of all of that was 796 pound and 49 pence not basically 800 pound for us both for the hotel tickets and breakfast so 400 pound each i honestly think that's a very good price for newport bay as well that is one of their um premium hotels like it's not one of their budget ones i always want to call it value deluxe and moderate like they're doing what disney world but i don't know what they call it in disneyland paris but um obviously yeah that's more of the higher end hotel bracket I think that's a good price personally but i have seen it cheaper i have seen it a lot more expensive and we did go it out of school holidays and we did go on monday to wednesday and we don't have kids so maybe keep all those things in mind i'm going to talk about parks rides and premier access and entertainment and then we'll talk about food so we went during the 30th anniversary celebrations which honestly and this is a bold claim I think that Disneyland Paris is celebrating the 30th better than Walt Disney World are celebrating the 50th. I just had more fun, guys. I think the castle at Walt Disney World looks amazing and there are some really good things for the 50th right now in Florida. However, I think Disneyland Paris have done an amazing job celebrating. The front entrance, the decorations, the attention to detail is great. Their 30th merch, meh, but the 30th parade is amazing. I would say it's basically one of my favorite parades. Actually, it's up there. Paint the Night Parade in Disney's California is my favorite. Festival of Fancy in Walt Disney World. And then in at number three, swooping in, is the Dream and Shine Brighter 30th Anniversary Disneyland Paris Parade. This parade is literally the best thing about Disneyland Paris right now. And I would go back in a heartbeat just to spend the day listening to the song and the energy of the cast members and the characters and the way it's done. Just go and watch my vlogs and see. But it is just fantastic. And my top tip for this is you want a spot that's sort of in the hub area you'll see that there are four little um stages and that's where the car the characters and the cast members come onto the stages and as long as you're in that hub area you'll be able to see because a lot of people hear the parade coming up main street and they aren't very patient and they just run down main street to watch it but if you just wait it out wait in the hub you'll see because everyone else stands in the same places. Um, let the parade come round, it will stop, the characters will come off, they'll get onto the podiums and then you can stand and watch. It's a really long parade, it goes on for ages, the songs are so good. This is such a bop. I love that Disneyland Paris, you can literally walk everywhere really easily. I love that characters pop up a lot more that I found in Florida. You can find some more unique characters. We saw um, Minnie in her like cowgirl outfit in Frontierland. We saw Chip and Dale. We met Goofy as well in the studios, which was such a fun meet. Actually, that was one of my favorite meet and greets. I find the character interactions here are the best I've had, truthfully. I would say expect to wait around 30 minutes for characters. Um, so yes, loved love the characters. I love that they have the arcades down the side of Main Street. So you've got Main Street, you've got the shops, and then they have the arcades. And when things are really busy, or you don't feel the need to have to walk down Main Street, because obviously everyone wants to walk down Main Street to see the castle on the first look but most of the time Benji and I actually navigated getting around via the arcades because it's just so much easier especially for paraders on Main Street can be really busy and it's cool in there and it's just a nice walk through so I love that I wish um, Walt Disney World had those because it just is so much better wait times were okay they were okay they were sort of what you'd expect um you're talking 10, 15 minutes in the morning, by about lunchtime rides went up to roughly around an hour and then they dip off again during parades and fireworks. We did have 
quite a few rides close, um, ones that we lo love actually. So Small World was closed, we always normally do that. And Space Mountain, Hyperspace Mountain was down as well. That was really disappointing because I love Space Mountain because it's such a good thrill ride and roller coaster, um, especially as Rock and Roller Coaster was obviously down because we went just before Avengers Campus opening. So yeah, there weren't many big thrill rides for us. I think Big Thunder really was the only one. I don't do Tower of Terror. Um, we did do Crusher's Coaster. There just didn't feel like a massive amount of rides to do, but that was sort of um, forgiven because the entertainment and the shows were so good. Let's talk about the Premier Access. Gone are the days of free fast passes. They don't exist. I've tried to park my feelings because I can't change the fact that it's not free anymore. Of course, it used to be better, and actually I used to prefer getting my little paper ticket. Um, but there are pros to having the new system. And you just sort of have to accept that it is the way things are these days. However, I thought we'd need it and use it loads, but we didn't. We used it on two rides on the Wednesday, on the Tuesday, and one ride on the Wednesday. We used it on Buzz firstly, which was nine euros each. So it was 15 pound for us both to go on Buzz. We booked Buzz, it cost 15 pound, 18 euros. And yeah, you get an hour to get there. And when you turn up, you just show your QR code. It's been so busy today, hasn't it? We haven't yeah. seen it under 50, 60 minutes, so. We're good. We've got to give it a go anyways yeah. to tell people about it, so. There we go, we'll let you know. The queue at the time was about 60 minutes from memory and we just walked on it, like less than five minute wait. The problem with Buzz is that it crashes quite a lot and it's just not a fabulous ride. Like I do resent paying for something like that, but Benji wanted to do it and I didn't want to wait. So in my opinion, yes, it's an additional expense, but I try and look at it like you're paying a premium for time, right? Because that's essentially what you're doing. You're saving time you're skipping the queue. Is it worth it? That's up to you. Like it's absolutely up to you if you think it's worth skipping the queue. We paid five euros each, uh, so eight pound fifty total to go on Orbitron, which was probably not worth it for us because well, we did have a laugh actually because they you can only fit one adult in one of those little space shuttle things. Um, so yeah, that actually was a longer way. I would say either walk on or maximum of about 15 minutes, um, which is the most we waited in a premier access line for Orbitron. It was really easy to use the app. I actually found the whole process very simple. Paying for it was simple. Actually getting up to the ride and scanning it on your phone was really easy. So yeah, I would say the experience of using their premier access service for me was fine. On the last day, I wanted to buy one for Crush's Coaster, but they were completely sold out by like lunchtime. And I wanted like a four o'clock before we were leaving and I couldn't get one. So maybe for those rides you definitely want to do and you're not gonna do an extra magic time, then consider that because it's a bit like in Walt Disney World, it's the same, you sort of have to factor it in. We did do single rider on Ratatouille, which we only waited five minutes for when that had a 45 minute wait at the time. So I would recommend if you have the ability and you don't mind splitting up from your party, do consider single rider on those rides that have it because I mean, Benj and I didn't mind. We both got to do the ride and experience it. And actually, uh, when we came off the ride, we both talked about it. Like, what was your favorite bit? What did you enjoy? And yes, you don't get the experience of having them sat next to you reacting to it in real time, but I quite liked actually coming off and like discussing it together, if that makes sense. So I don't mind single rider if it means I'm only having to wait five minutes. That was everything I was gonna cover on the park itself and rides and premier access. Let me know what you think about it all. Um, and have you been recently and how do you find it? I think the biggest thing to consider if you're staying in a Disney hotel is try and do those big rides in the morning. We did, um, and yes, we did pay for Big Thunder on the last day, but we were able to do it in the morning of the second day. And that is the best way to do it, really, I, I, how I see it. My friend Sam is an annual pass member. We bumped into her and she said she's never paid for a single ride on Premier Access, um, probably because she gets to go so often. So I guess for us, when we only visit the park, so this is our first time back in four years and we don't know when we're gonna go back, it was worth it for paying 10, 15, here and there extra 
um, so that we were guaranteed to do those rides that we wanted to do without having to wait. Let's move on to entertainment. Um, we've talked about Parade already because I think that was a massive highlight. They also have Disney Stars on Parade, which is another parade at the end of the day at the moment. It was like five o'clock-ish um, down Main Street. And so not to be too confused, they have two different parades at the moment. And um, Disney Stars on Parade is also fine, is good. I like watching this from Main Street. Uh, you do want to stake out a spot <laughs> around 30 minutes before if I were you. We got a snack and we had drinks and we sat in the sunshine on Main Street and it was actually a really lovely, like, magical moment for me. This is why you'll want to get a spot 30 minutes before because this is what Main Street looks like. Absolutely rammed. That's fine because we've got a nice little spot although we are in the sun. I already talked about the characters. Fireworks were good. I have already seen I think it's Illuminations, isn't it? It's called in Disneyland Paris. I have seen it before. I think it's dated, guys. I feel like it's been running a long time. Feel like they could definitely update it. I do think that maybe the fireworks need a little bit of love, but they're not they're not bad by any means. Actually, very good fireworks. The drones are really cool that they do like a five minute show before the fireworks start where they have a drone show celebrating the 30th, which is really cool. Um, and they make the number 30 out of drones, which is very good. Liked that, liked that. The fireworks were really late because in the summer months, it doesn't get dark until late. The fireworks started at 11 p.m., which I found really late. Like that's such a long day if you're getting up to do extra magic time at like 8 a.m. Maybe well, you're up at seven, aren't you, to have breakfast in the parks by 8, 8.30. And if you're staying until 11 o'clock for fireworks, you definitely want to factor in a break time, time in the middle of the day, because that's a really long part day otherwise. But fireworks were good. They were good. We got a spot kind of near, it was sort of the main area, to the right, not far from the fountain that's in front of Palazzo Gardens, I want to call it. So this is where Sam suggested. This is Palazzo Gardens. Plaza Gardens, not Palazzo, Plaza. She said to be as central as possible, so I want to go far left to this side. The shows were so good. We always have loved the shows here at Disneyland Paris. We went at Christmas time last time and I loved Mickey's big band. I think they've got some really strong shows that really make Disneyland Paris. For me, my favourite was the Lion King show. This absolutely exceeded my expectations. It was sensational. The cast members were amazing. The costumes were amazing, the set. The singing, a lot of the Lion King songs that we know and love. Basically, it's a celebration of the Lion King in terms of um, it, they roughly sing all the major songs, 30 minutes, wrapped up. Everyone can follow along very easily and it was just visually very beautiful. And the theatre was really nice. The seats are very uncomfortable because um, they're sort of all just, you know, a row seats rather than individual comfy seats with no backs to them. And the other show we, we saw was Mickey and the Magician, which was in the theatre in the Walt Disney Studios Park, which was also really good. That has um, more of a mix of French and English. I'd say it leans more in French than it does English, but they do alternate. So Mickey might speak in French and then another character or cast member would speak in English. So you always sort of understood what was going on and you recognize all the songs as well, you know, but that was definitely, um, I thought it'd be more of a show about Mickey being a magician, but it was actually more of like, I don't know how to describe it. It was a very nice little show where they had lots of different characters come in and out. It was just very nice and I would watch it again. If you could only see one show do The Lion King though, it's sensational. The only other thing I was going to add with the shows is that we did pre-book and pay for our shows. Now, this might not be applicable when the parks are not as busy or later in the year, but I have friends that had been out a couple of weeks before me. So my friends Gary and Adam went and then my friend Georgie went out about a week or two before me and I told her to go and see both shows and she didn't pay and so I told her to allocate like 30, 40 minutes beforehand, which you'll have to do if you want to queue and see the shows, you'll have to queue up. And she queued for, I think it was 20, 30 minutes and then they were... Um, turned away because the theatre was full. So obviously it's such a waste of time queuing for something and then no guarantee of having an actual spot because it's so busy. And when we came into the theatre for The Lion King, the queue was huge. It was so big. And they do run the show pretty frequently. But for me, I if I can pay, which I appreciate is not always in everyone's budget and isn't always possible, but if I could pay 
to rock up 15 minutes before and guarantee a seat and I know what, exactly what time I'm coming. I like that. So I did pay 13 pound, let me get the price. Oh, so total was 26 pound 68 for us both. And I did that for both shows. And I pre-booked via the app about two weeks before. You don't get to pick your seat. You just rock up the earlier you turn up. So if you turn up like 30 minutes before the show starts, you may get a better seat. But we turned up about 15 minutes before both shows and we had a good seat. I would say it's not really about the seat though. Like, yes, you'll get a slightly better seat. But I think from either theatre, you can see the show from pretty much anywhere you sit like you can get you can see it well from anywhere you're basically paying for the luxury of definitely guaranteeing a seat and not having to wait in a massive queue in the heat it's a very similar concept to the premier access you know like it's up to you but i would always recommend pre-booking them i just think for the sake of 13 pound whatever it was um it was worth it for us let's talk about food then so like i said i paid 100 pound for breakfast which you could argue is completely outrageous and old me i think in the past would have said i'm bringing cereal bars bringing croissants and that's fine however <laughs> my fiance is a 27 year old hungry six foot three man so he needs a big breakfast to fuel him up at the beginning of the day and for me i just felt like well if we have a big breakfast maybe we won't need as big of a lunch or maybe we have a light lunch and then a bigger dinner but i just knew that having hotel breakfast would be beneficial not just for um the convenience of having it in the hotel but i know that the options in the parks for breakfast is naff it's just really rubbish guys i'm sorry there's just nowhere really good for breakfast unless you're paying for like a character breakfast at like Palazzo Gardens or it used to be Chef Mickey's in the village but unless you're doing one of those like character breakfasts or something I just don't think there's anywhere that's really worth recommending. So you might say that £50 per day is completely outrageous and look I'm not denying it isn't it is expensive but the breakfast was really good. There was literally everything you could think of. There were Mickey waffles, pancakes, sausage, eggs, bacon. Also, if you're being really savvy, you could definitely make up like a cheese and ham croissant or a little sandwich um, or take some snacks with you into the park. That's definitely something I'd do next time is pack some snack bags or a little lunch box. I don't see why that you couldn't do that. I would do that. So you could definitely save, even though it'd be expensive, you could therefore then save money on your lunches so in terms of food we our first meal was at Chez Remy on the Monday night we really liked it here love the theming uh, we had very slow service but otherwise the theming here is amazing I actually did a whole reel I'll show you here of um, Chez Remy I think it's really really pretty and the food itself the meal cost 77 euros we did a set menu so we both got a starter and a main and a drink I think that was yeah and um, we then used our 50 euro gift card. We actually used some of it for some cookies on Main Street that day as well. Um, but the total we paid actually for that meal was 28 pound and 5p because we had the gift card as well but it was a really nice meal actually i really enjoyed all my food there i know it's got a definite hit or miss um some people love it some people have absolutely hated it so uh maybe keep that in mind on the next day we had lunch at the mexican restaurant that's outside big thunder mountain i've eaten here before with my mum and my stepdad and i remember liking it and benji fancied a burrito so we had burritos we had frozen cocktails, I think. Did we have um, mojitos or frozen mojitos? Something like that. And I also had an ice cream, Mickey ice cream premium bar here, which was good. Um, and we had chips on the side. The whole meal cost about £45, I think, for us both. We had definitely had lots of sides. You could definitely do it a lot cheaper than that. That was a really nice lunch. really liked that. And then we went to Billy Bob's Buffet, which is in the village, for dinner. I wanted to do a buffet because I thought that by the time that the second day came around i didn't know what we'd fancy and i thought a buffet could be good this came to 101 euros so we got the meal two buffet for two adults and we also had the celebration cocktail the 30th one divine the cocktail was incredible like one of the best drinks actually the best drink i think i had the whole three days um but the buffet i just found way too expensive for what it was so it came to 86 pound 77 including the two cocktails so let's argue the cocktails i think were 12 euros so let's say 10 let's say 66 pound 
for the meal so 33 pound each which i just think was just just on the high end for the quality and what we got i thought the food was very okay there was a good mix it wasn't too busy you didn't have to wait too long in the queue to get what you wanted um and they did have some like salad options they had lots of desserts but it wasn't i didn't think it was anything groundbreaking for 33 pound each roughly give or take you know what i mean but for 86 pound including the cocktails um that just felt extremely expensive for a very average buffet but that's just my opinion on the last day we ate our food at the food festival we went to a few different food booths they had like this temporary summer um festival thing going on where they had different food from around the world so they had like an italy booth and we went to a germany booth and portugal we liked the food but we didn't love anything again nothing was groundbreaking nothing was worth me saying you need to get this and the same goes for snacks we had the mickey waffles that were covered in nutella which benji doesn't love nutella so he wasn't wowed about this but we still ate them we had cookies i tried the rice crispy treat and i had the mickey premium bar um the ice cream bar was fine that's sort of bog standard but all the other snacks were just very they're very average nothing was very wowy the only other thing i was going to add in this food category was make sure you bring your water bottle they do have water fountains so you can refill your water bottle oh the only other thing i was going to add is that mobile order is coming they're pretty good at it in florida and i love it i actually think it's brilliant a mobile order is actually available i think for two or three of the restaurants currently at design paris we didn't use it didn't do it but it is coming so keep that in mind you may save yourself loads of time queuing because it's one of those things that people don't think about if you know you know if you're watching this far into a video then you know to look out for mobile order to save you time so that's something i would do in the future i think i'm gonna have to go back to Disneyland paris within the next year or so because i really want to do the avengers campus i really want to try a different hotel and i really want to try some different food things because you know three days is not enough to fully review all the foods is it and i'd like to try mobile order so i can talk about all these things for you in the future but that's everything I was going to say about food. Little section for weather. Like I said, I've been for all seasons at Disneyland Paris. In the winter, it gets really cold. I've been in December and I, it's, it's been freezing. Like it's been snowy. I've had ski gear and thermals on. It is so, so cold. And I like it at Christmas because I think it's quite magical, but it was just way too cold. And in the summer, it can get really hot. It can get really, really warm. So for me, the sweet spot is spring summer so i love march april may and june they're sort of my prime time i think and then halloween september october is pretty good as well uh, but obviously it depends on which season you're looking to go what time of year is good for you do you need school holidays that kind of thing but i would say june felt like one of my favorite times of year because the weather was just lovely it was that perfect not too hot not too cold it did rain a little bit here and there but i feel like you don't really care too much if you come prepared and you've got the right shoes and maybe an umbrella or a fold up rain jacket in your rucksack you sort of prepare to tackle the rain doesn't really matter too much um but it was lovely really lovely weather i especially loved it on that second day when we sat and watched the parade the sunshine it was really nice but don't forget to put your sun cream on don't get sunburn <laughs> the next section is shopping and merchandise and the tax refund um so the shopping is okay i didn't love much of the 30th anniversary merch i think they are having supply issues and some of it seems to be coming back in stock but there was nothing very wowy uh, i really wanted the spirit jersey and a mug um, and a pin and i just didn't find any of those sort of 30th things however i did buy a spirit jersey like a generic one and the retro disneyland paris like euro disney um range came out when we were there which we both really liked so in terms of merch they had some good things i bought three pairs of ears um but nothing that i thought was like you must get this in disneyland paris but i was happy because the, i bought these ears and these are in walt disney world right now and they had them in disneyland paris which is great the one thing we did notice is that lots of the merchandise is identical in lots of the shops the village disney village definitely needs some love it needs an overhaul and it is getting one soon i don't know when they're doing an expansion and they're doing it over new shops new restaurants all that kind of stuff but yeah the village is is okay it's nice it's, it's fine it's, it just feels quite dated 
um, so I'm really glad that they are going to update that eventually. Now the only other thing to discuss with you is the tax refund thing. So I don't know if I'm going to do this justice, I'm going to do my best to try and explain to you. First learned about this in Norway actually. So when I went to Norway on the cruise, they had somebody come on board on the last day and you could like give them your receipts and do some paperwork to get a tax refund and I had no idea. And then with Disneyland Paris I heard about it but I didn't know what the process was and I didn't get it right. So I'm gonna try and tell you how to do this. And I'm only gonna tell you from my perspective, my opinion, um, but I also did actually screenshot some messages from you guys from this week that have been successfully doing it. So let me get that up for you. Okay, actually I'm gonna read this message. So I've been to Disneyland Paris for the weekend and after watching your vlog, I went to City Hall armed with my purse of receipts and I collected my letter and barcode from Disney telling me I'm entitled to 65 euros. All I have to do now is find the machine in the airport to scan my form wish me luck i found out it's by exit five and then she sent me another message that said easy in fact i'll show you now just have to wait and see if the refund arrives no reason it shouldn't it's like i got this for free thanks for the tip so when you buy merchandise products so not food and drink and snacks but the, the products so if you buy a spirit jersey a pen a, a bubble wand an outfit for your kid like whatever keep your receipts and I would suggest having a little pouch, little fold, a little envelope in your family bag or in your handbag. Buy your product, your pin, get the receipt, put it in your folder and then you need to either go to the City Hall or the World of Disney and Disney Village. I found apparently City Hall is better. You take all your receipts to Disney and they will give you back the receipts and a letter with a barcode that says the amount you spent and the amount that you can claim back in a tax refund then you take that letter to a machine or a person in the pictures that this lovely caroline sent over it does say there's a sign that says tax refund and it looks like there's a vat refund box drop off box thing in the airport and at the euro star as you've gone through security, you've passed security and you're about to board the train, before you go downstairs to board the train, there is somebody on the left, there is a little window in here, it's very obvious, it says tax refund, that you take your form to and they'll process it and you can get a ref refund on your items. I really hope that makes sense. I haven't obviously done this properly myself because I took all my receipts to the guy at the Eurostar and I didn't take it to City Hall and get the letter and barcode that I needed. I'm assuming that I can do this for any European country that I'm traveling to now then. I'm really not 100% sure, but I'm learning and I'm passing it on the knowledge. So that's your tax refund. Please, please, please let me know if you're successful with this and how much money you save. I really would love to hear how much money you guys can save. Other random things I wrote down. We couldn't get park maps, paper ones. We asked, they had none. They said they had a massive shortage. They don't have any to give out to people. So there were no park maps, which was a bit sad. But I did ask if they had buttons because they do have celebration buttons like in Florida. They're not quite the same, but they do have them. And the guy said, yes, they did have buttons. Avengers Campus is coming to the Walt Disney Studios, which may already be actually, what time, what day am I filming this? I think it's just coming or it may have just opened um, by the time I'm recording this, uh, but it's so needed in the studios because the Walt Disney Studios Park is lacking a little bit of love and it's gonna be expanding even more. Frozen is gonna be coming like an Arundel area and this Avengers Campus area is gonna absolutely transform this park and I'm so excited about it. And yeah, I just, just thought I'd add it on because if you're planning a trip, this is going to be a big part of that trip. Definitely want to stay in another Disney hotel in the future. I just love them. Although lots of my friends do stay off site and there are loads of hotel options. But for me personally, it's Disney hotel all the way. I just like it. I like the perks. I like the flexibility. I like the ease of being so close. So it's worth it for me. Little tips. The app that I use constantly for wait times for rides, my favourite app is called Magi Park. That's spelled M-A-G-I-P-A-R-K don't know what it is on android for some reason some of my viewers can't find it if you're on android in the google play store 
but if you're on iPhone, I'll leave it linked because I can find the link myself from what I downloaded, but it's Magi Park. I think it's free. It was free when I had it and it's the best because you can put alerts on rides. This is honestly the best tip ever. You can put alerts on rides that are down and when they open back up again. So I wanted to go on Big Thunder. I put an alert on, I put the bell notification on and it told me when it was opening up again so we could walk straight over and skip the majority of the queues and we were able to do big thunder as soon as it reopened in extra magic time with like a 10 15 minute wait which is really good so i love magi park um and you can swipe either side of it and it tells you which rides have which wait times and it has like a traffic light system of green amber red so you can sort of see which rides are um busier than others and I just love it I really really love it and then for other things like where toilets are or what time the shows are I use the Disneyland Paris app for that so they're my favorite apps I don't really use anything else I didn't bring many euros this trip I just wanted some to be able to leave a tip um, especially for mouse keeping but mostly I put everything on my Monzo card. Monzo is my card of choice. I find it really easy. It tells you the transaction on the screen as a notification, how much you paid in euros and how much that was in pounds. And I just think it's the best one out there. So Monzo is my card of choice when it comes to spending abroad. I don't think there was anything else I was going to add on Disneyland Paris other than that, that I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. We had a really good time, really felt like we got a lot done in three days. It definitely felt magical. The parade wowed me. Still think there's lots of room for improvement but overall it has made me want to go back sooner. Like we hadn't been back in four years and now I'm debating going back next year for my birthday. So I'm kind of thinking, <laughs> yeah, I want to go back sooner because I just, it was so easy to get there. And I just love Disney Park so much. I'm now going to break down the cost of how much everything was. This is by no means a how to do it, the best way, a budget way. None of that because I did what was worked best for us. And I had a bigger budget than I have done it in the past. I've definitely been to Disneyland Paris for a lot cheaper than this. So the trains to and from Bournemouth to London Waterloo were £55.23 return for us both, which was so cheap. We have rail cards, so that definitely helped. But I did upgrade us to first class on the way out because we went on the Jubilee weekend and it was heaving. We couldn't get a seat. So that was £20 for the upgrade for us both. And then the Eurostar, which was the direct train stand on the way out, the Premier on the way back for two adults, was £384. Again, you can literally get Eurostar for like 20, 40, 60 pounds, but we wanted certain dates and certain times and direct. So that was the price we paid. Our family dropped us at Bournemouth train station on the way out. And then on the Sunday, we took an Uber from Waterloo to King's Cross. So we actually went up to London the day before. On the Wednesday, we took a black cab from King's Cross to Waterloo. And then we took another cab from the station to our house. So total on taxis was £43.07. The overnight stay at the Hub Hotel at London King's Cross. Didn't talk about that actually, but very briefly, we loved the stay here at this hotel. If you need to stay in a hotel the night before in London, this is really close. There's loads of Premier Inns around there, but the hub by Premier Inn, London King's Cross, was £66 for the night. It's um kind of like a, just a very basic hotel, but has everything you need, and we had no issues here. And I've actually booked to stay in a hub hotel again in central London in about two weeks' time, because I liked it so much. So yeah, that was a good price, liked that. Already told you the hotel and tickets and the breakfast came in total of £796.49. Obviously we paid for the breakfast in advance and like I said, we had that 50 euro gift card, but I spent £248.13 on food. Premier access, we paid £46.37 total for the three rides over two days for two people. Prepaid for those shows that came in at a total of £53.72. And my overall spending on merchandise was £193.19. So that definitely adds up when you're buying three ears and a spirit jersey and all the pins that I love to buy. I definitely have expensive taste in the merch that I like to collect. Like pins are like £10-£15 each. So keep that in mind. <laughs> so the overall total for food, shows, premier access and merchandise... Uh, for the three days for the two people was 541 pound and 41 pence so drum roll please my final
final total for the whole trip with everything included, no hidden costs. The only other thing is we have travel insurance as well. That would be the only other thing I didn't factor in, but the cost was £1,906.20 for two adults. So definitely not the most frugal, cheapest way, but that really does account for travel from home to London. Obviously, if you already live in London, you can factor that out. And that's the hotel the night before, all the additional food. We didn't need to eat in, um, you know, a different restaurant each night, but we thought for the sake of the vlogs and sort of giving you a detailed round of review, we wanted to try a bit of everything. And I actually think we got a really good trip out of that. Let me know if you'd like me to try and do it on a budget. Maybe that could be fun. I'd also love to do Disneyland Paris solo one day. So if you're interested in like a budget trip or a solo trip, or you really like hearing the breakdown of the expenses, let me know because I can do more videos like that. If you got this far in the video, I can tell you we're planning a Walt Disney World trip for soon. Please make sure you subscribe so you don't miss future Disney vlogs because they're coming. I hope you've enjoyed this very detailed, full on Disneyland Paris guide. I have loved filming this for you. I am extremely sweaty. <laughs> Oh my gosh. But thank you again and do check out the vlogs if you haven't seen them already and let me know when you're going. What are your countdowns? When are you off Disneyland Paris? Have you loved your trips recently? Any other tips or advice or wisdom, nuggets of information that you can share? Leave it in the comments below because you may help somebody else on their future trips and it's always really nice to share. I will say I'm in a group on Facebook that's called Disneyland Paris for the Brits and I learn loads in there so big shout out to that group because the people there that are working super hard to answer people's questions, I just have so much respect for. So I'll leave the link to that below for you as well. And I'll leave a link to attraction tickets and the Disney website and everything you might need to know. I'll all leave it, the app, all that jazz. Um, but thank you for watching and I'll see you again in my next videos. Bye.